Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, find words that can be formed by characters. So we're given an array of words and a string characters. So for example, like this, we have this list of words and a string that is this attack or attach or whatever you want to call it. We can call any of these strings in this array good if and only if they can be formed by using the characters from that particular string. Now, we don't have to use every single character in that string, but we can't use each character more than twice. So we see that two lowercase a's are in the string. That means we can use a twice, but we can't use t twice and we can't use the other characters twice. So let's just go through it. Which one of these words do you think is good? So just blowing it up a little bit, we have uh, the first word cat. Now let's just check character by character. C is that in the string? Yep. So we use it once. So let's cross it out. Next, we have lowercase a. Yep. That shows up in the string as well. And lastly, lowercase t. So it looks to me that this word is good. We'll do pretty much the same thing with the rest of these. And I won't show you that because I think it's relatively simple. BT is obviously not good because there is no lowercase b in this string. So this word is not good. And we'll find that this word is good. This is good. And a tree is not good because there's no R in this. So we ended up with these two good words. What is our return value going to be? Well, basically, we just take the length of each of these words, add them together and return that. So the length of this word is three length of this word is also three add those together we get six return six that's the result for this problem so relatively simple now the only thing is how do you translate an idea like this into code like what algorithm do we use what data structure do we use i think at the very least it's simple to understand that we want to check word by word is this word good or not so that's what we're going to do we're going to iterate over this list of words now for a particular word how do we know if it's good well probably we want to iterate character by character. So we're probably going to have nested loops to do that. How do we know that all of these characters show up in this word and that the count is under the threshold for each character? Probably the easiest way would be to take this string, convert it into a hash map where we count each character and map it to the length. So lowercase a is going to map to two, t is going to map to one and C is one and H is one. Then we're going to kind of do the same thing. We're going to map this to a hash map as well. And we're going to go character by character. We're going to first just check that this character definitely shows up in this hash map. And then we're going to get the count of each character and make sure that the count of each character is less than or equal to the count of this particular string. And by doing that, we'll know whether each word is good or not. If a word is good, we're just going to take the length of it and add it to the result, which initially is going to be an integer that is going to be set to zero. So that's the overall solution. What is the time complexity going to be? It's basically just going to be the number of characters that we have in this array which I mean, we could write a math formula, let's say like n is the average length of each word and k is the number of words. So you could just multiply it. I think it's personally better just to say like n is the total number of characters in this array, but whatever. And also, let's say m is the number of characters in this string, because we do have to iterate over that as well. Space complexity, though, it shows why it's better to write the formula this way, because space complexity, uh, let's say we wrote the formula this way, which would be uh, n times k plus m. The space complexity complexity would be M because we are going to have a hash map with all these characters and N is the number of characters like the average number of characters in each word or maybe the most characters in the longest word then we're going to need to put that word in a hash map at the same time that this one is so I guess the space complexity would be N plus M so this is time complexity and this is space complexity now let's code this up so the first thing I'm going to do is just take the characters that string and put it into a hash map in Python it's pretty easy to do that we we can use something called a counter past that string and this will basically return a hash map counting the occurrences of each character we could have also explicitly wrote out the code to do that we would have just needed like a for loop to iterate over all the characters i'm also going to have a variable for the result which is what we're ultimately going to return so i might as well put that here now now we're going to do what i said the nested for loops for every word in the list of words and then for every character in that word we want to do something we want to 
count the occurrences of each character in that word. So what I'm gonna do is call current word, maybe I could call it current count, but it doesn't matter too much, I think. I just try to avoid like super long variable names, but if you'd like to have longer variable names, feel free to do that. What I'm gonna do here is not just make a regular hash wrap. In Python, you can do something called a default dict, and I'm gonna pass an integer. So this means if we try to do something like this, access current word of a character that hasn't already been inserted, this will return zero because we specify that this is a default dictionary of type integer. So this is going to be convenient for us because what we're going to do here is just like this. We're going to say current word of the current character. Let's increment that by one. And we're allowed to increment it by one because even if it hasn't been initialized, the initial value will be considered zero. So that's good. Now we know that this word is not good if the current character is not in count, which remember that maybe we could have named it better, but that is the hash map corresponding to the character's string. So if this is not in count, that character doesn't exist. Or if the count of that character is now greater than the count from the string of characters available to us, then it's also not a good word. So what would we do in that case? Well, I'm gonna have a Boolean flag, which is gonna tell us if the word is good or not, because we definitely want to know that. So initially, I'm actually gonna set that to true. We're just assuming the word is good, but if it turns out the word is not good, we're gonna set that Boolean flag to false. and. Also, we might as well break out of this loop because if the word is not good, then we already know it's not good and there's nothing else for us to do. When We know we're not gonna add the length of it to the result. So we break out of here and then we check if good is still true, which would happen if we didn't ever break out, we just iterated over the entire word, then what we're gonna do is add to the result the length of the current word. But if it was not good, then we wouldn't end up adding that length. So this is the entire code. Let's go ahead and run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.